at the mission. A little more details. So the mission used mission is made of two phases, uh, the three-story phase and the uh, frigate orbital phase. The three-story phase starts with the launch. Two minutes after that, we have the separation of the four lateral boosters. The flight continues with the separation of the fairing after 3.4 minutes approximately, and then the separation of the second stage after five minutes. The flight continues until about uh, nine minutes into the flight of the frigate stage and determines whether it has or does not have enough energy to go all the way to the final orbit. It decides to separate them and then the uh, separated bodies fall into the Atlantic. This continues then with the flight of Frigat with two boosters with the main engine. The first boot, 800 seconds long, enables a transfer of the uh, upper uh, stage and the payload to a next elliptical orbit. And then the second boost, which takes place much later, three and a half hours after liftoff, circularizes this orbit in order to reach the uh, final satellite orbit, which which is at uh, 23,000 kilometers approximately. 300 seconds after the end of the second boost, the payload is separated. The two Galileo and IOV uh, satellites are separated simultaneously in two opposite directions. Forget then continues its mission for five hours until it gets to its graveyard orbit, which is at 300 kilometers above the operational orbit of the satellites. Very concise explanation there by Liz de Chantonnet of Arian Space. What's up next? Uh, we have had the uh, meteorolo meteorological uh, reports uh, saying that all the criteria uh, uh, and specific conditions of wind velocity at low and high altitude, cloud thickness and assessment of flagging risks are now uh, green. So uh, you can see on the uh, green panel when we get back to Jupiter that uh, everything is fine on, on this side. So the meteor is green for the launch day. That's a, that's a good time. The item that we have there. Another similarity with the Ariane flights is the launch management. We're taking the camera up uh, close to the launch pad. You see what those people are doing. Yeah, with Jean Claude Carreau, the launch operations manager on our space side, and now uh, Dimitri Baranov, the launch operations manager on the Russian side. So there are two teams: the uh, European teams and the Russian teams, working in, in pretty close cooperation. And Frank Vassel are in charge of the uh, production aspects of the of the launcher. So this first Russian and European team uh, cooperation with who uh, led the people to conduct all the launch space activities constitute in itself a great multicultural achievement. These people are about... Uh, oh, there's a key on the... Ah, on we the right. see the key. It's a famous key that turns on the, uh, the final yes, launch. Yes, uh, uh, wondering who will uh, keep the key after the launch. Waiting on the pad, just under three minutes. Inside the fairing, the satellites maintained in cool and clean condition through uh, ventilation inside the uh, inside the launcher. It and does, looks like he's gonna call out uh, one of the final back to Jupiter operations. Waiting for the umbilical mass to uh, be pulled off the launcher. We see this mass with the uh, umbilical plugs which are connected to the uh, satellites base of the fairing and uh, ensure the electrical connection with the satellites. And what happens is they are pulled away. Yeah, There's a DDO calling out. The dis disconnection. Disconnection of, of the, the umbilical, umbilical slugs. These are electrical. Then, and then this big metallic mass will be pulled off the launcher. There, there are connections for the satellites, electrical connections for the lower stage and for the upper stage. So Three the satellites vocals. are totally autonomous and uh, on, on uh, internal power supply. Well, we are still uh, topping up the uh, oxy liquid oxygen inside the propellant tanks of the first, uh, second and third stage. Coming up on a minute, we'll be into the final minute, final 60 seconds of this historic uh, first launch of Soyuz. They crowd on that, lots of press here, as you can imagine. Witnessing space history. Maybe we should uh, give a rundown on the, of the ignition sequence, which you'll see, which is a little different than Ariane. Yeah, this what sequence happens, uh, starts approximately 17 seconds before liftoff, and the 20 engines will be ignited first at low thrust level, then intermediate level, and finally full level, enabling the propulsion for the minute. DDO is going to call out the one minute mark now we'll be into the final 60 seconds before liftoff. Top, one minute. 
Uh, we are within the last minute before liftoff. You can't hear, you can hear a pin drop here. People are so attentive. They're starting to go out here. The invited guests going out on the terraces on either side here, they're going to watch the launch from outside. Remember what Alex said, at minus 15 seconds, the first controlled ignition at a weak pressure, minus 7 seconds, and a second one, an intermediate pressure, testing the engine at about 50%, monitoring them while it's still on the pad, and then at minus 3 seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase at full throttle. We'll let you no, watch. No, it in, huh? There comes the umbilical, right on time. We're ready to go. We'll let you watch the liftoff, and we'll be back with you after Soyuz has cleared the tower. Enjoy it, everybody. Top, début de, début de séquence allumage lanceur. Bagage et carré, tout ça pour vous. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top, décollage. a page of space history has just been written and you were present at its creation as were we alex is almost in tears next to me yeah and you, were, you were cheering so is on and gorgeous beautiful the uh, lighting up the south uh, yeah, the, the, the ddo saying everything is fine on board so is lifting off perfectly from the soil here in her new home in french Guiana, guyana beginning her mission number 1777 these pictures will go around the world they're already on the internet you'll see them in the papers and tv tomorrow uh, 313 tons at liftoff, less than half of the mass of uh, Ariane 5. Alex, on the left, on the upper part of the screen, what are we looking at? Uh, the white curve, which shows the uh, flight prediction, which is entirely computed, and the white spot uh, on the curve shows the real-time position of the launcher. This position is regularly sent by the launcher telemetry system and received by the tracking stations and then sent to Kourou and uh, where it is transmitted to the computers here in Kourou and uh, you can see the curve as a spot on the... So you can follow that not along with that. The DDU says everything is normal on board. On the lower left, the two bottom lines, A and V. On the lower left, then we have the altitude, uh, 30, 36, 37 kilometers now, and the velocity, 1.6 kilometers per second. And the speed needed to inject the satellites is? Will be at about uh, 7.6 kilometers per second. Okay. So uh, keep your eyes on the numbers, folks. The boosters are burning now, produced in Samara in Russia. The boosters are on the first stage. And you can see they just have been separated, the DDO says it, at uh, 107, 118 seconds, two minutes roughly. That's coming right on time. We're into the uh, second phase of the flight. The second stage is, uh, is burning now. The next milestone coming up will be jettisoning of the fairing. Coming up in about uh, in a, I would say yeah, we are now heading to in fact we are heading to Europe uh, north east at 54 degrees inclination and uh, everything is fine on board and the uh, all the parameters are, are following Normal. the curve the boosters uh, weighed 45 tons each at liftoff and uh, working with liquid oxygen and kerosene. We are at about 100 kilometers uh, altitude, and then the fairing will be jettisoned. Fairing provides uh, acoustical and other protections for the payloads inside during liftoff, just like Ariane. It also provides the thermal protection of the launcher uh, with respect to the uh, molecular flux of the uh, uh, high layers of high density layers of the atmosphere, which we don't have above 100 kilometers, roughly. So yes, we we're almost in vacuum, and then the fairing uh, will be jettisoned. So we don't need it anymore. Weighs, uh, weigh measures four meters in diameter, roughly 11 meters in length. What's it weigh? About a ton, I imagine. About, I guess. So it's a uh, dead weight, which we don't need anymore. Uh, some words on the uh, flight safety. Uh, we have a uh, safety, flight safety uh, uh, system, which uh, will enable us to uh, verify that the uh, launcher is following its trajectory 
but you can follow on the curve there. And uh, in case of any...